Hey everyone! Today we're going to talk about starting less to finish more. Um, it's one of the core principles that I work with when I go into a client site and uh, usually what we're doing is we're trying to combat this uh, subconscious mindset that we're only making progress if we're starting things. Um, now it sounds a little bit silly, um, it sounds like a recipe for spreading yourself too thin and you'd be right in thinking that, um, but it's something that's actually really easy to do in the modern work environment. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, when we're, we're chasing up actions or we're following up on things, what you're actually doing is you, you're triggering a whole bunch of things to start as opposed to trying to finish things off. Um, and it, it sort of builds this momentum and this kind of perpetual movement. Um, I think it happens for a number of reasons, but um, I wanted to talk about like the impact of that today because I think sometimes that goes a little bit uh, unseen um, it sort of flies under the radar a little bit and it's linked to another principle that I teach around hyper transparency and being able to build collaborative environments where um, everybody's able to see a lot of what's going on in a way that uh, most modern organizations don't do very well so um, what I do observe in a number of clients that I've worked with is that we will, what, what usually happens is that we'll have teams of people that might be organized based on functional unit um, and, you know, there's a team leader in place, there's, there's some le sort of levels of hierarchy going on and then we might put together cross-functional project teams where we take one from each and we kind of, they put 50% of their time to that project and, and that supposedly all works well. Um, but what I see happening in that environment that I don't think people are necessarily consciously aware of uh, is that we start to, in an effort to make progress, in an effort to get things done, we start to set up meetings where we're delegating out tasks to individuals. Um, and you know everybody's on a spectrum, right? So um, some organizations do this better than others. But when we start to delegate tasks to individuals, um, what's happening is that we're perpetuating a culture where we're actually managing individuals as opposed to looking for outcomes for that team. And so what happens is we, we delegate a task or an action down to an individual to go and follow up on. And then that person goes away and that one thing might be part of 21 things that they've got on their plate. And so in an effort for them as individuals to then go and manage their work, um, you know, I, I know if it's me, um, what happens is I will start to do what I would call postboxing. So I will post out a bunch of emails on the things that I'm working on to everybody else whose help I need to try and get them involved. And so my 21 things, I'll send something over to Sally, um, and then while I'm waiting for her to come back to me on that one, then I'll send something else out over to Jeremy. Um, and then while I'm waiting for him to come back, Sally might still not have come back to me. So I'll post the next thing out to um, Beverly. Um, and, and so you perpetuate this sort of post boxing of sending out a whole bunch of things and waiting for people to come back. And then when you multiply that out and everybody's in that space of, their 21 things, um, my 21 things might not overlap with your 21 things. We might have one or two in common, um, but we're not, we're probably not going to overlap with all of them. And so then you're postboxing as well, and the person next to you is postboxing as well. And you can imagine how noisy it gets really, really quickly, right? And so then you start, what happens is that because I can't see what your 21 things are, but I can see my 21 things, and I know you're not getting back to me on the two or three things within my 21 things, then I start to feel like, well, what else are you working on? What else are you doing that's, you know, that could be more important than my 21 things? And because I don't have that visibility, I start to judge that you're, um, you're not being responsive, you're not being proactive, you're not focusing on the right things, you're not focused on what's important. Um, my thing's taking a while. Um, and it's just a natural tendency because we are all doing our best to focus on the most important thing, right? Um, 
and and so then we start to actually drive this wedge between our teams where there's this lack of empathy because we're not seeing what everybody else has got on their plate and we're not making decisions as an entirety around what's the most important two or three things. All of these individuals have got their individual activities and those priority decisions, they're still happening. They're just happening at a level where you can't see them and you've got no visibility. It's down to the individual to manage what they think is the most important and negotiate with the person next to them. Um, and, and that's where that sort of tension comes in. Now, when you overlay on top of that, the environment that we've got today, uh, where people are scared for their jobs, there's huge amounts of uncertainty and ambiguity in our environment. We aren't, as leaders, um, certainly not in what I've witnessed um, globally, I don't think we're doing enough to help to disconnect the, that, that feeling of, if I if I don't have certainty and if I don't have something to do, then my job is going to be in jeopardy. If we're not actively doing enough to disconnect that, then we have a whole bunch of people who are out there postboxing their work, doing their best to focus on what's important, terrified that if they're not busy, then their job's going to evaporate. And we, we wonder why there's so much noise. And so I guess I wanted to share some observations that it's, you know, it doesn't take long for this stuff to get out of hand. And so my challenge to you this week is what are you doing to build visibility in your teams? Not to uh, manage an action list. So we don't want to go down that kind of typical project management, like tick things off the list type of who's doing what, how are you... That, that's kind of the anti-pattern. What we're wanting is the visibility of those outcomes. Um, and I think I've shared with you before, my ideal for a, a team is that each person has maybe two to three things max and that they share those two to three things in common with all of their teammates as well. And so I would challenge you to go out this week and to, to ask yourselves, what are you doing to build the visibility in your teams of the two to three things that are the most important? And what are you doing to then help just dissipate some of that noise so that over time we can move from everybody having 21 things to actually everybody only having two or three things. And we're coming together as a group and as a team to focus on those two to three things um, and get them across the line before we pick up the next thing. Um, now I know this feels like slowing down. Um, often when I go through this with teams, there's all of a sudden things come to a grinding halt and, and people hate it. Um, I had a team last week actually that just turned around to me and said, I don't want to. <laughs> and, and that was where we were at. And once it, once it was on the table, it was fine, we moved on. But you know, it, it will feel like grinding to a halt. But what you'll actually find is that as you slow down and you start to focus on those things, as you make it safe for people to not be busy and to go and jump in and help their teammates on something on, on one of the couple of things that you're working on that are really important so you make that safe environment once you encourage that behavior once that noise level dies down the whole thing's going to start to flow and so then you get into a place where when I say start less to finish more we're talking about flow and it's about optimizing the flow of work through the organization it's not about focusing on 50 different things and trying to get them across the line. So that's your challenge this week. What are you doing as a leader to build the visibility of what's going on in your team? Even if it's getting everybody's 21 things down on paper the first time. Uh, but what are you doing to build that visibility? And then what are you doing to reinforce the clarity of the priorities and, and those top two or three things that actually everybody needs to be focused on that helps to diminish the noise? And then how are you encouraging that rhythm of a regular planning cycle where you come back and revisit and review and you make those decisions as a team and keep going? That's your challenge. What are you doing to create the visibility in your team this week? Um, that's it from me. I hope that you have a wonderful week wherever you are in the world. Uh, we have a massive, massive storm coming through the South Island of New Zealand over the next couple of days. Um, so that's going to be really interesting. I'm hoping for some snow on the ground, which doesn't happen very often. Um, and I hope wherever you are in the world, you are going to have an exciting week too. Take care and have heaps of fun. Thanks. <laughs>